Hey, happy Thursday, 4th of November. Glad to be with you. Pastor Steve here of Richland Lutheran Church. I just want to welcome you if you're not a, a regular attender, member, or partner in the gospel of Jesus Christ here in Richland. Uh, give you a special welcome. Those of you who are watching, uh, well, nationwide, we know we have friends that this uh, particular devotional series is meeting um, their needs and you're participating. And so it's just a joy to have you uh, here today. And uh, just, we appreciate you. I want to say I personally uh, do not underestimate the trust that you've put in me as a Bible teacher. And so uh, thank you for that gift of your trust and our time together. Hopefully, uh, if I don't know you, we'll be introduced one of these days, this side of uh, our glory, and certainly on the other side, of course. Listen, we're in the prayers of the pastoral epistles, the letters that Paul writes to pastors. We've looked at uh, the first two letters to Timothy. Now we're going to look at a letter that he writes to another protege or associate pastor, um, Titus. The very beginning of the book of Titus, Paul says uh, that Titus is in uh, Crete. And so um, this is where Titus is ministering, and this is where Titus is uh, doing uh, his pastoral ministry. It's interesting, the book of Titus is absent prayer, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> encouragement and encouragement to pray, except for the final salutation. I think this is significant. My guess here, I, I think it's an educated guess, is that Titus and the church at Crete are already faithful in prayer. And so um, Paul doesn't need to reiterate or say to them, keep on praying, uh, because they are faithful prayer warriors already. So what then can we learn? Uh, the very last words of chapter 3, Titus chapter 3 and, and verse 15 are the very uh, last words of this epistle, this letter. And Paul writes these five words, grace be with you all. Now, we might be thinking to ourselves, man, I, I don't... I don't know if there's a whole lot we can learn about prayer from five words, and especially these five words, but this is really a prayer. It's a prayer of salutation, a, a goodbye prayer, a, a blessing. It's intercession. It's a benediction, as we talked about a couple of days ago. And so it really is a prayer of Paul's for the church. And what's his prayer? That grace be with all of them. To whom is he speaking? The church at Crete, under the pastoral leadership of Titus. And what is, he, what is he asking for? First, grace. So what does grace mean? Well, quite simply, grace can be defined as something that is given, that is not deserved or earned. Uh, and so specifically, when we talk about when Paul speaks of grace, he means a gift, not earned, not deserved. And that gift is from God. And in fact, that gift is God himself in the person of Jesus Christ. So when Paul says grace be with you all, this is a weighted term, this term grace in Paul and his theology. And Titus and the church at Crete would understand full well what Paul is trying to communic communicate here with uh, Titus. Grace, basically he's saying, may Jesus, the undeserved gift, be with everyone in your congregation there in the church. This is quite the prayer in a few words. And I want you to think to yourself of all the kinds of uh, intercessory petitions you would make. So let me define kind of what I mean there. 
uh, by intercessory, I mean for another, and petition, I mean asking for something. So together, we're asking for something for another. Of all of those kinds of prayers, what is most important to ask for? I regularly pray for my wife, Jeanette, of course. It's daily. It's typically multiple times daily, including a, a deliberate time of prayer in the morning for her and in the evening as I uh, pray my uh, Ignatian prayer of examine or examine, uh, my consolation and desolation, praying for, for her and her day as I nod off to sleep. But then throughout the day, I pray for my wife uh, in little breath prayers or as she asks for prayer regularly. We are sending each other texts or talking to each other at lunch or uh, you name it, asking regularly for prayer. I'm going to this meeting. I, I've just learned this about a co-worker. Can you pray? And in praying for her, I often consider what's the most important thing? Is peace the most important thing? Is protection the most important thing? Is a sharp mind the most important thing? Are good relationships the most important thing? Is God's presence the most important thing? And I think that last one, we're trying, we're, we're at least getting closer to this prayer that Paul prays for Titus and the church at Crete. Grace be with you all. Isn't this just a prayer of God's presence for the people in the church uh, here? I think so. I think that by grace, as we've talked about, Paul means the gift of God that's undeserved, not earned, in the person of God himself, Jesus Christ. And be with, these are relational terms, right? Uh, be with, this, this verb really means to be present. May grace be present with you all. And so I think that we learn a lot about prayer especially as we pray for others. And maybe grace in the person and, and the work thereof of Jesus Christ is the greatest prayer we could pray for someone else that already knows him and maybe more importantly, who is yet to come to know him. Think about this. For those you know who are not in Christ Jesus, for those who have rejected Christ Jesus, having heard of the good news, the gospel, or for those who have yet to hear the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, maybe this is for all, of all people, the most important prayer we pray for those who aren't with him, who aren't in him, who don't know the presence of the grace of God. I think we learn a lot about prayer for the not yet believer, for the not, for the not yet disciple. What greater prayer is there than God's grace in the person of Jesus Christ for the one who does not yet have it? What do you think? Love to hear from you. Send me a text or an email. Give me a call. Drop by the office. Would love to see you. Let's pray. God, thank you for the gift of this day, your blessings in it. May we be found faithful and obedient, Lord, as we pray for others. Lord, maybe, maybe it's only five words you want us to pray for our families, for those we love, for our coworkers, for our neighbors, or maybe even for those who we would call enemy. I wonder what it would be like, Jesus, if our breath prayers, if our prayers were just made simple to say about another, may grace be with them. 
stir us to pray these very words. Jesus, it is in your name we pray. Amen. It's been a joy, friends. Miss you. Love you. Really do look forward to the opportunity and the time where we can just be together more normally. Not that we're normal, of course, <laughs> uh, but as we were used to before the pandemic. Hang in there. Love you. Miss you. Bye-bye.